веб і анткат, тобто каталог всіх типових екземплярів в мурах в світі і каталог власне мурах. На мурах, а мурашок. Мурашок. Що за мурах? Оскільки подальше року відбуватиметься англійською, то ця термінологічна деталізація не є дуже актуальна. Тим не менш, добре, мурашок. Я знаю, що Олександра Григорьовича є свій термінологічний контест. Це не буває. Але це так. І Брайан Фішер працює з усіма аспектами буття мурашок. І таксономію, біологію він здійснив низку експедицій. Ну і що нас рідний з Брайаном, так це любов до Африки. Зокрема, він теж поведений на Африці і на африканському біорізноманітності. Як я можу бачити на загал присутній в залі, він, мабуть, не потребує зовсім перегляд. Тобто, таким чином ми переходимо на англійську і більш до неанглійської не повертатимемося сьогодні. So I would like to introduce Branch Fisher. I'm very glad that you are here and I hope we all will enjoy your presentation and thank you for donating your time to our group. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Hello everyone, I'm going to speak in English, I hope you don't mind, I speak no Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah, I made, I made the notice that from now on we just speak English and nobody needs a translation. No, Danny in the free Yeah, everybody in, the, in this room speaks. Well, that's good. I, um, well, thank you, Alex, and everyone who has greeted Flavia, who, if you haven't met, is up here. We're both from the California Academy of Sciences, and we've been well received here. All the Alexes, there's three of them. Kate and um, everybody, you've been a great uh, reception. We've visited now 12 museums across Europe. This is our 12th museum that we're imaging all the ant types for. But I must say that we've been the best received here in Kyiv, so, so thank you. He was the best city in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we can say that now at today's, I like the temperature today. Much better. I love being San Francisco. San, this is San Francisco weather. It's never hotter than this in San Francisco. Um, today I'd just like to share with you some of the work I do on my research, but also explaining why this project is important to ant research and biodiversity research, why we're imaging the types, why we've asked your help in doing that. And I just want to speak generally why I think insects because there's so many entomologists here, and it's fascinating why I think um, we have important contributions to make. Now, I just want to start off by saying that my dream is that we would know the name of every ant in the world. Like, just know them, like we know birds. We'd know where they're from, their habitat, we'd know if they're introduced, we'd know if they're endangered, and not just know the name of the ant, but how that relates to human well-being and how we can actually use ants as a tool for monitoring the environment. Well, we have a long way to go, right? We've only discovered about 20% of all life on the planet. But I'm mostly concerned about ants. I really love ants. We've made better progress on ants. We've got about 50% of all ants species we estimate described. That still means there are many new ant species, even in Ukraine, to find. But for most people, they don't realize this. They only see ants when, when they enter their kitchen, uninvited. But people don't realize that actually ants are one of the most important actors in this ecological theater. Shakespeare once wrote that though she be little, she be fierce. And it's actually not just because they're numerous, it's because of their complex societies. Ants have evolved on a different dimension. It's actually that complex society that really makes them so interesting to study in terms of their behavior, but also in terms of how they've evolved and filled so many interesting niches. And therefore, as we realize as insect taxonomists that nothing makes sense unless we understand insects. In other words, we can't go into a forest and say the forest is the trees. It's actually really the biodiversity is about the insects. But who cares about that biodiversity? Even conservation groups never 
almost never include insects in their planning. And when people go to a forest, they're often more interested in seeing the trees than they are the insects. Now, why is it important? You can explain to people that what we really want in life is really like a Dow Jones index to the environment. What if we could know so much about the environment? We could tell you if you put that mine or that road or that city there, it will have this impact. But we are not even close to having a Dow Jones index to the environment. Once again, we've only discovered about 30% of life on this planet. And that concerns me, because there are a few people that can be dropped into a forest and actually understand what's around them. And in a place like Madagascar, I wanted to go and actually see if we could systematically document the biodiversity in that country. So I've been working over the last 20 years in Madagascar, which is what we call the Malagasy region, surrounded by these islands like the Seychelles, the Mauritius, the Comores, the Europa, but also Next door in East Africa, Flavia and I spent eight months last year living in Mozambique in the north. We've been able to sample in northern Mozambique now. We wanted to see if we could put together the story for ants and other insects for that region. So we want to start off, why Madagascar? Now Madagascar is special in terms of conservation and, and biodiversity because of its geological history. It was once attached to East Africa broke away with India about 120 million years ago, and then India broke away from Madagascar, India moved north, dropped the Seychelles, then hit Asia, forming the Himalayas. It's that long isolation that has resulted in unique life in Madagascar. You have all the primates are endemic to Madagascar, 136 lemur species found only in Madagascar. But even more surprising, if you came from Kenya and jumped over to Madagascar, you'd be surprised what you don't find. You don't find venomous snakes, you don't find elephants and ungulates, you don't find the pythons, which are found throughout Africa and Asia, but you find boas, which are found only in the neotropics. And you don't find the most dominant ants, the driver ants, the army ants, the weaver ants, they're completely absent. It's like we've given a chance to study evolution, a unique piece of the life, puzzle of life. And that's why Madagascar is interesting as a biologist. It gives us a kind of a second chance to see how life evolved. And in addition, Madagascar is like a continent that has rainforest in the east, dry forest in the west, and in the southwest you have this bizarre spiny bush forest, these Dr. Zeus plants that are found only in Madagascar. Now, people arrived, surprisingly, very recently. We estimate it's around 2,500 years ago, people arrived in Madagascar. That means these large birds, like the Apiornis, the largest bird, was actually alive, but 500 years ago. So, humans were around when these large, large creatures were there. So, Madagascar began a dramatic change with colonization hunting the large prey like the birds. They brought rice cultivation from Asia, leaving massive deforestation. But 10% of the habitat is left. Now each of those little patches that are left are special. You walk into them and there's life. And it's amazing how they persisted in these small patches. And our question was, what if we could preserve some of those patches? Which patches should we preserve? Can we use insect data to actually decide which of those patches are more valuable in terms of biodiversity? Now why insects are interesting is because humans often in these small patches have killed all the lemurs. You may only find introduced rats, all the native vertebrates, but the insects are all there. And that's why I think it's important to go to these small patches I've only found this happen in Africa, in Madagascar, where these small patches still have the native millipedes, the native scorpions, the native ants. They persist in these small remnant forests. So we designed a study where we visit, in a very systematic way, those patches of forest. We would sample based on the climate, so the rainforest to the driest areas. Along the coast, you have the seven, oops, seven, oops. 
You have 12 month dry season here and very wet over here, raining up to 4 meters of rain in the northeast. And then based on soil. So basic, where you would find different plants, you would find different insects, so we designed a study. And we organized 350 localities we would visit in Madagascar and do a standardized protocol of collection of basic entomological tools. So we, in fact, I designed this leaf litter technique and a standardized transect of taking 50 samples through the rainforest. We'd have beating vegetation. We'd have pitfall traps, loads of malaise traps. And we'd also have baiting for butterflies, yellow pan traps, general collecting, we call it, or hand collecting. And we did this consistently across all 350 sites in Madagascar. Now, on the computer, it's really easy to design those exact sites. We want to visit rainforest on crystal. We want to visit rainforest on basalt. We want to visit in the dry forest. But then to get there often took longer than actual the field, field work itself. So this is where the adventure, in fact, field work is the greatest adventure on Earth. You don't need to go to Mars. You just need to go to a rainforest site. And the infrastructure in Madagascar is basically non-existent. We work in the rainy season. This may be a small stream in the dry season in the west, but in the rainy season, which is when the forest is alive, is when it becomes fascinating to be a biologist there, but also extremely difficult to get your vehicles there. So we actually have spent a lot of our time learning how to, uh, I don't recommend doing this with your vehicle, but actually it does work. These Toyota Land Cruisers are amazing. And we've had exciting trips with French biologists who have taken us to remote forest patches to get in there, into the canopy using what's called a rado de seam. And this is interesting, it's like a big balloon with a mesh in between. You drop it and then you jump down and you live up there and you're in the canopy, and it's really a desert environment. It's hot, it's miserable, but there's different ants up there, so you have to do it. But as you know, insects are easy to collect, right? So you have to be efficient, and our methods were tested to capture the most diversity for the fewest specimens. But there's a problem with a lot of large-scale biological inventory projects is how to manage the processing. So entomology didn't really exist in Madagascar. There is no Department of Entomology or National Museum. So we basically decided to create it from scratch. So we held courses, training programs, and over time we brought them to the United States. They now have gone to masters, PhD, and we have a core team of people that we process specimens. And this large team actually needed a home, a national collection. So with time, I built a museum there. We call it the Biodiversity Center. And here it is. We've now our solar energy off-grid. And we have two floors of classrooms where we teach here. And we have two floors of research. And if you want to visit, you can stay in our research facilities up here. We're located in the National Zoo. So it's, uh, you can wake up to lemurs, and it's actually nice, and it now houses the national collection of insects there. And we created this center with this goal is to basically give a voice for insects at all levels, which is non-existent. A voice of insects in research, when they're designing permit processes to make sure insects still can be included easily, to actually work with the government in terms of education, we're sponsored by the Ministry of Education, but also to actually promote insects into popular culture and also tourism. And I'll mention at the end some of our new programs in terms of insect farming for, um, for food. But in my idea was that of course everybody would love to have insects from Madagascar to do research, right? So our team in Madagascar pro processed all the insects down to a particular level. Hymenoptera was to family, beetles was to family, Odonata was just to Odonata, and we'd ship them out to 180 taxonomists around the world. And this is me leaving Madagascar with that year's harvest, 
that's been collected the year prior, processed through the year, and then shipped off to taxonomists around the world. And that's been going on since, at this scale, since 2001. Probably one of the largest tropical bio biological inventories of insects.